The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Today, we delve into the pages of Scripture to explore the theme of a one-world government, a concept that has fascinated and intrigued humanity throughout history. From the ancient rebellions of the Tower of Babel to the prophetic visions of the future depicted in the book of Revelation, we will delve into the organized rebellions against God and their inherent longing for global authority. In our quest to understand the system of the Antichrist, we must recognize that the only way to gain true insight is to examine the rebellions of the past. By doing so, we can discern patterns and observe a reoccurring force in the world, a force that has persistently pushed for a one global ruler. There is a spirit that has always pushed for a one global ruler. In the book of Genesis, we encounter the story of the Tower of Babel. Babel, also known as Babylon, refers to both a city and a kingdom mentioned in the Bible. Babel itself was founded by Nimrod. According to the Bible, Nimrod was a significant figure who emerged from the lineage of Cush. He is mentioned in the book of Genesis and described as a mighty ruler in the land of Babel. The name Nimrod itself carries a connotation of rebellion, as it means, let us rebel. Historically, our knowledge about Nimrod is limited primarily to the biblical account. Outside the biblical narrative, there is little historical documentation about his specific life and actions. The story of the Tower of Babel, mentioned in Genesis, signifies humanity's attempt to defy God and establish their own power and glory. Nimrod is often associated with this rebellion, serving as a symbolic figure representing human defiance against God's sovereignty. A group of people under the rulership of Nimrod united in their desire to build a tower that reached the heavens. Their motive was twofold, to make a name for themselves and to defy God's command to disperse across the earth. This rebellion against God's sovereignty illustrates mankind's yearning for a centralized power, devoid of divine authority. Let's explore the biblical passages that shed light on this rebellion against God's sovereignty, highlighting mankind's yearning for a one-world government outside the rulership of God. Genesis 11:4. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. This verse reveals the intention of the people to establish their own identity and reputation disregarding God's plan for them to multiply and fill the earth. Their desire for a centralized government and prominence echoes their rebellion against God's sovereignty. Genesis 11, 5 and 6. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, there are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. God's response demonstrates his awareness of the rebellious spirit and the potential danger it poses. He recognizes their unity and the power that comes from working together for a common goal. The emphasis here is on the human yearning for centralized power and the consequences that may arise from it. Genesis 11, 8 and 9. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the languages of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. These verses reveal the consequences of their rebellion. God intervened by confusing their language, causing them to abandon the construction of the tower and scattering them across the earth. The name Babel itself carries the meaning of confusion, symbolizing the outcome of their defiance. This account of the Tower of Babel serves as a significant reminder of humanity's inclination to pursue centralized power and rebellion against God's divine authority. It demonstrates the inherent desire within us to make a name for ourselves, often at the expense of obedience to God's commands. The desire for one world government did not end with the Tower of Babel. Throughout history, individuals and groups have attempted to establish such a global authority. Let us consider a few examples. Alexander the Great. In ancient times, Alexander the Great dreamt of unifying the known world under his dominion. With his military prowess, he conquered vast territories, striving to establish a unified empire. However, his aspirations were short-lived, as his empire fragmented after his death. Napoleon Bonaparte. In the early 19th century, Napoleon Bonaparte rose to power, seeking to conquer Europe and beyond. 
His ambition was to establish a centralized rule, bringing various nations under his control. However, his grand vision crumbled. Though these attempts failed, there is one man who will succeed according to Scripture, and that is the Antichrist. In the book of Revelation, we encounter the rise of the Antichrist, a powerful leader who will deceive the world and establish a global dominion. Revelation 13 paints a picture of a one-world government under his reign, where people will be coerced into worshiping him and his unholy agenda. There is a spirit that has always pushed for a one global ruler. This spirit is no other spirit than the spirit of the Antichrist. Now, we will look at a different way the spirit of the Antichrist is preparing the world for the arrival and rulership of the Antichrist. The work of the Antichrist is already starting, but people do not see it. One, false teachings and deception. The spirit of the Antichrist promotes false teachings and deceives people, leading them away from the truth of God's word. It distorts and denies the essential doctrines of Christianity, including the deity of Jesus Christ and his redemptive work on the cross. At its very core, the spirit of the Antichrist attempts to point people away from Jesus Christ and the cross of Christ. For without Jesus Christ, there is no salvation. For without the cross of Christ, there is no salvation. Throughout history, the spirit of the Antichrist has worked tirelessly to sow seeds of confusion and deception, challenging the foundational truths of the Christian faith. It strategically employs false teachings that undermine the deity of Jesus Christ, denying his divinity and the significance of his redemptive work on the cross, attempting to lower Jesus Christ to be just a prophet, or just a good man, or just a miracle worker. That is not all Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ is God. However, the spirit of the Antichrist attempts to undermine the deity of Jesus Christ, denying his divinity and the significance of his redemptive work on the cross. The Bible warns us about the emergence of false teachers and deceptive doctrines. 1 John 4, 3. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. 1 John 2, 22. Who is the liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. These verses emphasize the need for discernment and a firm grounding in the truth of God's Word. The spirit of the Antichrist seeks to lead people astray by distorting the nature and purpose of Jesus Christ. It may propagate teachings that reduce Jesus to merely a great teacher or a moral example, denying his divine nature as the Son of God. However, we must firmly proclaim the biblical truth that salvation is found exclusively in Jesus Christ and his sacrificial work on the cross. Scripture is clear that there is no other way to salvation apart from Jesus. Acts 4, 12 And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. John 14, 6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 2. Opposition to God's moral standards the spirit of the Antichrist promotes values and behaviors that stand in direct opposition to God's moral standards as revealed in Scripture. It encourages immorality, relativism, and the rejection of absolute truth. Throughout history, the spirit of the Antichrist has been at work, influencing the world with a distorted worldview and values that defy God's moral standards. It promotes a culture of immorality and seeks to erode the foundations of absolute truth found in Scripture. The Bible warns us about the prevalence of immorality and the rejection of absolute truth. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But understand this, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power, avoid such people. Romans 1, 25. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. The spirit of the Antichrist encourages a mindset of relativism where truth is considered subjective 
and personal preferences dictate moral choices. It undermines the belief in absolute truth, which is grounded in God's unchanging Word. However, as believers, we are called to uphold God's moral standards and embrace the absolute truth found in Scripture. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 and 4 Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. 3. Persecution of Believers The spirit of the Antichrist fosters hostility and persecution against followers of Christ. It seeks to silence and marginalize believers, hindering the spread of the gospel and undermining the influence of the church. Throughout history, the spirit of the Antichrist has manifested in various forms of persecution against believers. It works to create an environment of hostility where followers of Christ are targeted and oppressed for their faith. This persecution aims to silence the message of the gospel and hinder the advancement of God's kingdom on earth. The Bible warns us about the reality of persecution that believers will face. 2 Timothy 3.12 Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. John 15.20 Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. The spirit of the Antichrist seeks to undermine the influence of the church and hinder the proclamation of the gospel by inflicting persecution upon believers. This persecution can take various forms, including physical, social, and emotional persecution. Believers may face discrimination, hostility, and even violence because of their commitment to Christ. However, Jesus encourages us to stand firm and find hope amidst persecution. Matthew 5, 10 Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 4. Globalism and worldly unity The spirit of the Antichrist promotes a worldly unity and a global mindset that seeks to consolidate power and authority under one ruler. It entices people with the idea of a utopian world order, apart from God's divine authority, in its pursuit of a one-world government. The spirit of the Antichrist fosters a globalist ideology that aims to consolidate power and authority under a single ruler or system. It presents the allure of a unified world, promoting the idea of a utopian society governed by human wisdom and devoid of God's divine authority. The Bible provides insight into the vision of global authority associated with the Antichrist. Revelation 13, 7 And it was given to him, the beast associated with the Antichrist, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. The authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. This verse reveals the extent of the authority given to the Antichrist, encompassing every tribe, language, and nation. It portrays a scenario where a central figure rises to power, wielding significant influence over the entire world. The spirit of the Antichrist entices people with the promise of a unified global order that seemingly offers solutions to global challenges, such as conflict, poverty, and inequality. However, this unity is built upon human wisdom and seeks to exclude or marginalize God's divine authority. It fosters a worldview that places human aspirations above obedience to God's commands and His sovereign rule. While unity and cooperation among nations are not inherently wrong, the spirit of the Antichrist promotes a unity that rejects God's authority and leads people away from his truth. From Nimrod the hunter to various individuals throughout history, different men have attempted to unify the entire world under the rule of a single individual. The Antichrist will achieve this, motivated by the spirit of the Antichrist, which is already at work. This force persistently advocates for a global ruler. Despite its subtle presence, people are unaware of its existence as it has already begun shaping the world. It has already started, but people do not see it. Also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.